Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cocktail Vlog. Welcome to video number two of the Five for 500K, celebrating 500,000 subscribers. Today I'm featuring five cocktails from famous TV series or movies. And it's been a super popular request. So let's get started with the White Russian from the Big Lebowski. Nice and simple this one. I'm gonna start very, very easy, ease you into the cocktail video. And I'm gonna try and represent how the cocktail is actually made in the, in the movie or the TV series. This one, Big Lebowski, he makes it a couple of ways. He makes the White Russian about, I think maybe nine times within the movie. And it's always free pouring. Um, he does prefer to use Smirnoff vodka in the, in the movie. And he free pours roughly two parts, two parts vodka to one part Kahlua. It's, uh, yes, I'm, I don't free pour often. So it might be off, might be a little bit off. And then one part of cream. He pours it from a carton, uh, so it might be half and half, and at least one of the times in the movie he pours a creamer, so a non-dairy creamer. It comes with like powder, not popular here in Australia, but pours the powder on and then gives it a quick stir. Yeah, usually with his finger, not, not a spoon, but hey, there you go. So there you have a white Russian as featured in The Big Lebowski. Sweet, rich, coffee, delicious. It might not be the best recipe for the drink, but that's how he makes it in the movie. Free pours, nice and simple, but if I was recreating this at home, I'd 100% use a jigger. I would change my coffee liqueur to Mr. Black, but that's how he makes it in the movie. On to the next one. Next up, I've got cocktail number two, which is the Orange Whip, which was featured in the Blues Brothers movie. Who wants an orange whip? Orange whip? Orange whip? Three orange whips. Uh, a movie back from the 80s. They've done a sequel since then as well. And it's a, a rum and vodka based cocktail. So we're measuring out 30 mil, one ounce of rum. Now, they don't actually feature the scene of them making the drink in the cocktail. So I'm kind of just making assumptions here, but I'm using a plantation three star rum. Uh, an island blend of rums, and then Finlandia vodka, 30 mil, one ounce. Followed by a triple sec. I'm using Cointreau, so 15 mil, half an ounce. And thank you to Tim Kirkland for the, for the bottle of rum and John G for the bottle of Cointreau. I'll leave a link to buy the back bar in the description below, but as it is at the moment, we don't have the buy the back bar open because I've been spoiled. I've got too many bottles back there, but massively appreciated. I appreciate you guys, and thank you for buying the back bar. Then we've got 60 mil, two ounces of cream. And I should also note that a lot of the recipes online don't actually fe feature the triple sec. They do have rum, vodka, and uh, cream and orange juice, but we want some more orange flavor in there. And then we've got 120 mil, four ounces of freshly pressed orange juice. And then we're gonna flash blend this with crushed ice. So it should make a really nice thick texture with the cream, aerate it. It's more reminiscent of a tiki cocktail. So a couple of quick flash blends. Delicious. So a couple quick pulses on the blender, and then we're using a highball glass. This particular one is about 430, 450 mil. So it's a large volume to suit a large volume cocktail. Pour it straight in. And it's still not big enough. I've barely poured any of the crushed ice in, and it's still not big enough, but there's a little bit left. Of 
And then garnish with a giant slice of citrus on the side of the glass, which represents the orange juice and um, orange flavors in the drink. So there you have the orange whip as featured in the Blues Brothers movie. Uh, it's a combination of rum, vodka, and orange liqueur. Cheers. It's, it's relatively light, but it's got a lot of citrus flavors in there. Uh, it's reminiscent of like a fluffy duck and a Ramos Gin Fizz. It's a typical 80s cocktail. Next, we have the Cosmopolitan from Sex in the City. This is a shaking cocktail, relatively easy, only a few ingredients, and we're starting off with a vodka. A couple of vodka-based cocktails, actually. So 45 mil, one and a half ounces of your preferred vodka. And apparently there was six seasons, 94 episodes of Sex in the City. Um, then we've got Cointreau, a triple sec, we've got an orange liqueur, 15 mil, half an ounce, thanks to John for buying the back bar. And 30 mil, half an ounce of Ocean Spray cranberry juice. It doesn't have to be Ocean Spray, but I, I don't know of any other cranberry juice brands that are available in Australia. I don't know about the rest of the world. Uh, and then we've got 15 mil, half an ounce of fresh lime juice. So 15, half an ounce. Whoa. There is not much juice in these limes. Don't know about you guys, but limes are not cheap here in Australia. So 15 half, 15 mil, half an ounce of lime juice. Plenty of ice and give it a shake. Make sure you chew your glass down as well. So the original Cosmo was actually a gin-based cocktail with raspberry syrup. I'll leave a link to that up there but it was popularized from the Sex and the City show. And it was this version that was most popular with vodka and triple sec. So into a chilled martini it goes. Give it a double strain. So with this particular cocktail, there are some cosmopolitan recipes out there that call for more uh, cranberry juice, but as long as you keep that ratio of lime juice up there, then you don't need a lot of cranberry juice and it works out a much better cocktail. And then for garnish, I'm gonna add a twist of orange. I'll actually use another piece just to express the orange oils over the top and then use a somewhat of a, a dative, dated garnish. A little bit of twist over the edge. And of course you can flame the zest over the top of the drink as well. They have a Cosmopolitan featured on Sex in the City. I can see why it was popularized amongst many ladies after watching Sex in the City. It's very easy drinking. It's got citrus flavors. Uh, it's got a little bit of tartness from the cranberry juice and the lime. It's, it's very easy drinking. It's a vodka cocktail. It's not bad. So on to cocktail number four, which is the old fashioned from the Mad Men series. This is not exactly how I would personally make it, but I want to recreate it exactly how it is in the TV series so I can give you feedback on what it's actually like. So he starts by adding a sugar cube into his old fashioned glass and then soaking that in aromatic bitters. The particular bitters that he uses is unknown because it's an unlabeled bottle, but Angostura is kind of the go-to. So I'll put a few dashes in there and then give it a gentle muddle. The sugar will break down once it's soaked in the bitters. Then he adds, he makes two old fashions at the same time. I'm gonna, gonna make just the one, but he free pours as well. Uh, thank you, Caleb, for utilizing by the back bar. So he free pours. I would never free pour, but I'm just going to estimate. That's, that's a lot of whiskey. <laughs> so free pour some whiskey and then he adds some 
water. I don't know if it's a seltzer or if it's a still water, but there's other recipes out there that are calling for seltzer water. Just a tiny little splash, pretty much just to dissolve the sugar in the glass, but he gives it a quite a big pour. Um, so, yep. This is, I, and again, this is not how I'd make, <laughs> this is not how I'd make my old fashioned, but this is what I've seen in the old fashioned scene from um, Bad Men. He literally stores it, <laughs> sorry. He literally stirs it for like three seconds uh, and then strains it. It doesn't strain it with a strainer. He <laughs> strains it with his fingers, just like this. So he holds back some of the ice, pours it over the top, but you need all the ice in the glass anyway. Um, I can definitely see there's a lot of sugar left at the bottom there. Please don't let this be a reference on my bartending skills. It's just how it's made in, in the series. It's a little bit hard to see um, at the end, but I'm pretty sure he garnishes it with a, no, he garnishes it with a, a slice of orange, actually. Then he garnishes with a slice of orange. It could be a twist of orange. It's, it's, it's really hard to see in that particular scene and from, from what I can see, but they have a Don Draper old fashioned. And as I said, it could have been a still water, probably more likely. It's actually not bad, but it's, it's got this little kind of effervescence of um, the seltzer, or the, uh, sorry, the mineral water that I'm using. Well, there's ordinarily, it's a, it's a flat drink, but. It's definitely not the best old fashioned that I've had, but it's better than I was expecting. I'll leave a link in the description below for a classic old fashioned recipe so you can check it out. All right. On to cocktail number five, we've got the red eye from the cocktail movie featuring Brian Brown, an Australian actor, fantastic job, and Tom Cruise. Um, honestly, I've been like not looking forward to this drink whatsoever, but my, you can't even, uh, I need cat cam because she's behind the camera, she's laughing, she's snorting, and she really wants to see me do this cocktail. Um, I'm gonna make it as they do on on the movie, in the movie. Um, he does a few of these ones. So it's 180 mil, so six ounces of beer and it, it's meant to be a hangover cure. I'm not looking forward to it, but it does a few of these ones, it pours into a glass. I'm just, I'm not looking forward to it. Um, 120 mil of tomato juice, four ounces. And for those who have been watching the videos for a while, will know that tomato juice is just like my nemesis, my kryptonite. I do not like tomato juice. Then to top it off, it's finished off, you know, of course, with a raw egg, like why not? Just cracked over the top, just because that's, that will make a delicious drink. Why wouldn't it? Of course, everyone, everyone loves raw egg in a tomato juice cocktail. And it's not shaken, it's not. Um, it also includes two aspirin. <laughs> yeah, my wife's laughing, yep, brilliant. Throw that in there. Um, there's improved versions of this online. Uh, how to drink, Greg, he, he's, he's made this as well and he's improved it by putting like salt and pepper and Tabasco sauce and, but no, I'm just gonna go for the original, the less flavored version, the less tasty version, the less, the more authentic version that is probably not gonna taste as good. And I'm gonna regret doing, you can probably see it from the camera. There's this like clear, eggy layer. Oh, yeah. They have a red eye. Cheers. Oh. 
smash it, baby. Come on. Go, baby, go. Go, baby, go. If you like tomato juice, sorry. <laughs> if you like tomato juice, this is probably okay. But I hate tomato juice. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh. Okay, I've, I've had a few cocktails today, so this is probably a cocktail I should have tomorrow and test out the whole theory of. So it's, for me, it doesn't taste good. It's a, it's an, it's a no from Steve. From Steve. I can't even, I can't even come close to getting to the bottom of that. <laughs> I can't even come, <laughs> I can't come close to the bottom of that. And that, that's where the, all the egg is sitting. That's where the, 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 the goodness and the aspirin. Giving a stir makes it look horrible. <laughs> Why am I even doing this? Come on. Five to five Hurry up. Uh. Fatality. Okay guys, that is the first time on the channel that a cocktail has actually defeated me. I cannot do a red eye. I can't do egg and tomato juice. It's a horrible combination. I have no idea why it was featured in the movie, but um, stay tuned for the five for 500K. I've got a couple of more videos coming and yeah, it's gonna be a little bit more exciting than this particular cocktail. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you soon for another cocktail. Cheers. Oh my God, that was so bad.